Hello everybody, here's my mama and she's gonna be making, what is it called? Potato bites. Potato bites for y'all today. And here's all the ingredients and everything that you'll need. It's got a decent amount of ingredients, but I'll let her go through everything and explain it all to you. But Okay, okay you take your potatoes and you uh, peel them and you put them in, uh, boil them and make mashed potatoes out of them. And there's mashed potatoes on what? Yeah, if you wanna see her mashed potato recipe, which is this, then you could find it on the playlist that says my mama's secret recipes on this channel yeah and that'll be her mashed potato recipes and you make it just like that and that's yeah. the first step yeah the first step is the mashed potatoes and then you take your uh, onions you put your onions in and i done put some in here so i'm going to go ahead and put some more in here and i got one onion i put half of it in there and i'm putting half of it in there again and this is green onions yeah green onions it tastes better with the green greens in there. You take your bacon, you have uh, three strips of bacon or four strips of bacon. I done put some in there and I put some more in here and you just stir it up real good. Now this is just a regular fried bacon yep. and, uh, and then she diced it up and she crumbled it up and then she just put it in there. Yep, that's what you do. And uh, be sure and fix your potatoes now with salt and pepper and I just fix them with uh, canned milk and um, butter and salt and pepper and uh, mash them up. And then in this one, you put two thirds cup of cheese in it. Now I put a little bit of cheese in it. And you can put whatever type of cheese you like, but we yeah. normally eat cheddar cheese here, so yeah. that's cheddar. Yeah, I put the cheddar cheese in there. That's what we like, whatever y'all like. Yeah, anything y'all like, I'm sure it wouldn't matter if you put your type of cheese in there. So you just start real good. And I get a chance to use my little uh, meatball things is why I call them spoons. Uh, somebody sent these like probably a couple months ago and she hasn't got the chance to use them yet, but she's finally gonna use them for y'all now. Yeah. And it's it's already got some in there cause she already made some earlier. Yeah. Like a trial run. Yeah, I like to do a trial run. So, cause I hadn't made this before. You know, I see and I thought, oh, that look, looks so good. I'm going to try it. So then what you do is you uh, get your potatoes. And then you uh, put them in your eggs. This is like an oh, egg wash, I think. This is an egg wash. You just put your egg in there and beat it up real good. Roll your um, potatoes in it. Put it in the, the Italian uh, breadcrumbs. And I put Italian season in this because uh, milk got me the plain. And so this then, is breadcrumbs with the Italian seasoning in there. Yep. And so all you do is just roll it in that, drop it in this. So and you just keep doing that until you get all your uh, potato balls made up. And you make sure when you put it in there, it starts to sizzling and bubbling like that. So. Let me put that away from that. But that's all you do. Just keep putting it in there. And they are good. I done tried one. So we'll do this skillet full. If you want to make them extra crispy, you can put them in the egg wash and then in the breadcrumbs. And then you can put it back in the egg wash again yeah. and then back in the breadcrumbs again. And Every time you put it back and forth, it'll get more and more layer of a yeah, crunchy on it. It's pretty crunchy with just on one layer, but if you want the real crunchy, you can do that. And another thing, you put two tablespoons of flour in this, and I've done done it. I, I should have put some more in it, but it's doing okay. But put two tablespoons of flour in it, and you use about, I think I got about six potatoes in here. Yeah, there's my flour. I use two tablespoons. Here's our spoons that somebody sent her to. Yeah. And if you want to put more bacon, it's however you like it. But they are really good. I tried them. And you can dip them in uh, ranch uh, dressing or you can uh, uh, any kind of honey mustard, whatever you like. Ketchup. Yeah, ketchup. I'd rather just have these plain, honestly. Yeah, I, I tried them a while ago and I like them plain better than I do with the ranch. So, but it's... Yeah, the balls will stay uh, together better if you have a little bit more flour in them. 
Well, if you don't have no flour, they might not stick together too well. Yeah. But I already put some flour in this while I go two tablespoons. But I was going to put some more to show y'all, but I, I didn't do it. I forgot. But. And you just roll it all around in the breadcrumbs until it uh, covers the whole thing. Yeah. Make sure there ain't no spots that uh, didn't get covered with the breadcrumbs. And if you like them smaller, you can use a smaller scoop. If you like them bigger, yeah. you can make it a bigger scoop. And then just, you just turn them over to coat the other side. I'll let them cook a little longer. I get the pan full in there. Yeah, I like potatoes with everything. Meat and potatoes, that's the kind of person I am. And green beans. I love my green beans. Milton likes his pinto beans. But... Papa was at uh, jail ministry today. Him and his friend has uh, a jail ministry once a month. So they go up there and they preach to about three or four bunches of men. Yeah, they only do it uh, once a month, the last, what day of the month? Uh, Tuesday. So the last Tuesday of the month, they always go and preach to the people in jail. Yeah. They've had several to get saved up there. Is that make ready yet? But you just keep doing them till they get uh, crispy like this. No, no. And you gotta have oil, like a decent amount, like maybe a half an inch of oil in the bottom of the pan to to be able to boil up on them. Yeah, to cover about half of it. Yeah. And they might be a little bit hard to flip in there because they're kind of mushy at first. Yeah. Yeah, I should have put a little bit more flour in it, but I forgot it. We had a pretty good bit of snow today. Oh, that wasn't ready to turn. Yeah, we, uh, I think we had about two inches of snow today. But it's melting off real fast. Thank God. <laughs> so, but, uh, yeah, and it's pretty cold here, too. I think it's, uh, tomorrow's supposed to be in the 50s, though. I think it's tomorrow. Maybe it's the next day. Yeah, I think it was 20 degrees all night last night. I'll show you outside. Uh, since it's not completely dark out right now, y'all can actually see out there a little bit. I think the bottom don't have a screen so you can see through better on this one. There's the whole mountainside up through there. You can see all the way to the top almost. And here's the whole chicken lot. They're all inside. The door's open, but... And I got heat lamps in there, so they're all warm in there. It's got probably three or four heat lamps in there to keep them warm. And I guess they're all hunkered down for bedtime. Yeah, and most of the time they don't lay in the in the winter time when it's real cold. But we done got uh, twenty, uh, I think it was 24, 25 eggs already today. And he'll still gather some more eggs when he comes in tonight. Before he shuts the door on them. Yeah, he'll shut the door and that'll keep them even warmer. Keep critters out that tries to get in get them. Uh, if you don't shut the door, that sometimes uh, they might just stroll out and just leave and they'll got to do their own thing and then they're going to get eaten by something yeah. so you got to shut the door and uh, keep them locked in there at night time so the animals can't get in and so they can't get out because yeah. sometimes the fence just ain't good enough sometimes they once in a while they come out but most times they when they when it gets dark they go to roost yeah i had one person tell me said uh, they was wanting to kill this rooster because it was so mean and uh, they chased it all around the house and everywhere I said, well, don't you put it in your uh, uh, chicken house and when they go to roost, don't you get them then? She said, no, so they don't go to roost. They go up in the trees and roost. I said, oh, so you don't train your chickens to go in the chicken house? She mm -hmm. said, no. I said, well, that's what you do when they're little. You put them in the chicken house and leave them in the chicken house and then you let them out for a little while and they know when dark comes, they go back in the chicken house. Yeah, no. 
Yeah, Momo's chickens are well trained. <laughs> as soon as it gets a little bit dim out, they all immediately go straight into the barn and they all hunker down in there. We had a few that wanted to stay out. You know, next morning we go out there and they're uh, huggered up against the fence, wanting back in. Here's little Scrappy. Uh, he's coming to help Momo cook. Yeah, we're trying to potty train him. Boy, it's hard. We his... might get it done. <laughs> Here's Mama's slippers that uh, oh, yeah. we showed in the last video yesterday that somebody got her. It's little cats on there. Yeah, cats are. Maybe it's a unicorn. Look at that horn in the middle of its ears. Uh, I think it is a unicorn, actually. I believe it is. Yeah, they, they, and they're so soft, and they feel so good, and they got grips on the on the bottom of them, but you can't feel the grips, but they're on there. And, uh, but, uh, yeah, my feet, my toes got cold this morning. I said, well... I said, I think I'll put these on. And I've had them on all day. Oh, so thank yeah. you so much for whoever sent those slippers. Yeah. Yeah, I should have put some more flour in this. It's not getting real crispy. So I'm trying to come apart. Yeah. I'll put more flour in this over here before I fry the rest of them up. But, uh, and I'll show you what we got done here. And there's some things that you can leave out too. Like if you don't like onions, just leave the onions out. Yeah. Cause there's a lot of people that don't like onions. Got one here that looks pretty good. But be sure and put your flour in it. See that makes cooked enough on the bottom there. Uh, you put the more flour you put in there, the the more it'll hold up yeah, and it'll stay together. solid more. Yeah. Be like this one. Yeah. See I put some flour in there, but it was on the bottom, so but I should have added some more. You want to go over and show the cards while I finish this up because it might take me a few minutes. All right, she's going to uh, finish frying these last ones up. You just got to keep flipping them back and forth until it's brown on both sides like this. Yeah, like this one here. When they're brown on both sides like that, it'll be completely done and ready to eat. Yeah. You just got to let it cool off for a little while though because it might be sizzling hot on the inside. Yeah. I'm going to show you all the cards. This is the cards that we got for probably the last week and a half, maybe, or at least the last week. And they just built up and built up. And I guess it's the Christmas season, so everybody's been sending us a lot more cards. So thank you all so much for all y'all's cards. It really means so much to us. And there's no way that we could thank y'all enough because y'all do so much for us. So we just thank y'all as much as we can, even though it's not enough to, to show how much we thank y'all. But... We do appreciate every single card, no matter what it has in it. And uh, we do appreciate whenever y'all put stuff in the cards too, but even if you didn't, it's still just as much, uh, just as thoughtful, and we still love them just as much. This one's a really nice card. It's, it's like a three-piece card that folds open. And since there's so many, I'm just gonna scan over them, and I'm not gonna read all of them in this one, so, cause it would be a long video. It would be like 10 minutes of me reading over all these cards. So, and that's, a lot of people might think that's boring. So I'm just gonna scan over them. And if y'all seen y'all's cards, y'all know we got it. And if you don't see your card in this, but you send one, then just let us know in the comments and we'll tell you if we received it or not. But if it's not in this, then we haven't received it yet. But there's that one. It's got the manger scene and the, the shepherds, and then it's got the wise men. Some Christmas cards. But let us know if you did see your card too, so we'll know that that we got it. There's some Merry Christmas. This one's a homemade one. Looks like it was a Christmas trees drawn on there. I think at least. This one says peace with an angel. This one says God's love. It's got a prayer on there. 
This one's really nice too. It's got like a, when you open it up, it's like the manger scene kind of opens up a little. But I won't open it up because it's got a personal letter in there. And this letter here came with it. This might be like a recipe, but I'm not for sure. I know Mama already read it, but I don't know exactly what it said. And here's some more Christmas cards. The manger scene. These ones say Merry Christmas. And this one right here is a bunch of recipes in this. It's like maybe five or six papers and all of them just got different recipes in it. And Mama will try to make these for you as soon as she can. Like next time we get the chance, we'll start uh, making the recipes that you sent. And there's other cards that uh, we received too that's got their recipes on it. So we have them over there in the kitchen. We'll start making them as soon as we can too. And these, it says peace and joy. There's two of them that's come from the same person. One of them was for me and Kim, and one of them was for Mama and Papa. So thank you so much for those two. Thank every one of y'all for all of y'all's cards, and even if you didn't send a card, we still thank y'all and appreciate y'all. Some say Merry Christmas. Here's one so Joy. Happy Holidays. Blessings at Christmas time. There's the classic red truck I was telling y'all about with the Christmas tree again. This one's another personal letter. And here's that same truck again, red truck with the Christmas tree. This one's just like a, like a thank you card. It just says thanking of you. Oh, holy night. This one says, wishing you a candy cane kind of Christmas. Some more Christmas cards down here. Christmas greetings. Glory to God. Warmest Christmas wishes. And that's all the cards from the past probably week and a half. Yeah. But we thank y'all so much for all y'all's cards. We thank y'all for everything y'all put into them. It's very thoughtful and we're so thankful. We do appreciate every one of them. And we love y'all. Yes, we do. We really appreciate everything. God is so good all the time. And here's the P.O. Box for anybody who hasn't seen it yet. New viewers, new subscribers, or anybody that's requested to see it in the comments. You could picture it, pause it, write it down, or whatever you want to do. And if you uh, want to send something, we'll show it here on the table. If it's a card or a gift or anything that you send, we'll show it here on the table. And you'll see Mama using it in the video. Yeah. Try our best to use it. Here's the PayPal and the cash shop. This is just for the people that requested it in the comments and requested us to make it and to show it. So we just show it for y'all or any new viewers or new subscribers that hasn't seen it, but y'all definitely don't need to send anything. It's just if y'all really wanted to. But we're, we're not asking y'all to send nothing. It's just if y'all decided to yourself, yeah. that's fine. But you can picture it and pause it, write it down or whatever y'all want to do. We truly appreciate everything y'all do for us. Y'all yeah. just amazing. It really means so much to us, yeah. and it helps us out so much, everything. It does, yeah. Because everything's so high anymore. Yeah. Food and stuff is going outrageous. I don't know what people's going to do. You know, so uh, uh, I, I think about these old people. Sometimes they can't go and get, uh, their, they either have to decide where to get medicine or get food. You know, that that is awful. That's awful. You know, they, they, they have to starve or they have to stay sick. Yeah, that, that's just not right. But here's our um, stuff. Now this is what I made today. If you put your flour in, it's the way it did. Now see, this one stayed up pretty good, but not as good as this one. And some of these didn't stay up as good. So what you uh, need to put more flour in them to make them hold, hold up. These two here I done a while ago. So, and uh, that's what they look like inside. You can put more cheese in it or more bacon in it, whatever you wanna do. And they are really good. They are really good. That's your potato bites. Yeah, and you can make it custom to however you yeah. like it. You dry my hands off. Or you can put anything in there that you want to put in there. Yeah. And here's y'all's uh, prayer book. Yeah, prayer book. Anybody who sent a prayer request in the comments, Mama will put y'all in this book, and we pray for y'all 
All yeah, the time. All the time we pray for y'all. You know, uh, I think of, I think about you all the time. Even during the daytime, I, I think about the request that has been sent to me. And uh, we pray over them. And I ask God to really touch y'all because, you know, this is a world where there's pain and trouble and sorrow. But one day after a while, you know, we're not going to have all that. But uh, while we're down here, everybody needs to pray one for another, you know, that God will move in each situation, each person's situation. And that's what I pray every day. I ask the Lord to take care of y'all, to wrap his arms around you and love you, Lord, and let you feel his presence and know that he's near and that he loves you and he's trying to help you, you know. But God is good, you know. But one day after a while, we won't have all this pain and sorrow. We'll be in a place where there's nothing but peace and joy. And it'll be so good. I just thank the Lord for his love and mercy on us. So, but, amen. Uh, amen. But today I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be reading out this book again. I really enjoy this book, The Bible Overview. You know, and um, I'm going to be talking about Leviticus, the book of Leviticus in the Old Testament. Um, it says the purpose for Leviticus is the heart of the potential one of the main functions of the first five books of the Bible is to give an identity to God's people. At the core of his identity lies Leviticus. At the center of the book lies holiness. It is not a mere dry and boring rule book. Rather, the wellspring of holiness is the living God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God who defeated Egypt and divided the waters, the God whose presence dwells in the tabernacle, Leviticus teaches God's people how to safely live in the presence of a holy God. Um, and then I'm going to go on over here and read a little bit more about Leviticus. Um, it says, the setting uh, is Leviticus takes place within the two years that Israel spent camped at the foot of Mount Sinai. In Hebrew, the first word in Leviticus, which is translated and he called, uh, connects the narrative of Leviticus with the narrative of Exodus. That is, Leviticus continues the story of Israel receiving God's instructions at Sinai. The main difference between the instructions in Exodus and Levit Levit Leviticus, I'll get it out here in a minute, is that in Exodus, God speaks from the mountain, whereas in Leviticus, God speaks from the tabernacle. It says, reading the book of Leviticus can be intimidating. It may seem to be a barren list of rules that couldn't possibly be useful for people nowadays yet the book of leviticus can be a wonderful spiritual adventure by looking at the themes in the book we can gain insight into the value of leviticus for us today and it talks about purity it says purity was necessary as people lived around the tabernacle god's presence rejected the ritual impure perfection rights were god's provisions for the people to be able to approach his presence Today, the blood that Christ shed on the cross purifies us and makes us fit to approach God's presence. Instead of ritual purity, today we are called the godliness. Um, and then over here, it talks about holy living. It says, a holy life is not one filled with dread and marred in guilt. Rather, it is a hopeful, joyful, and satisfied way of living, a life lived according to God's original plans. Um, the many rules, laws, and ordinances are boundaries that guide us during our lives. So, although many of these ritual regulations depend on the sacrifice and purity rit rituals, which have become re redundant after Christ, uh, the principles on which they uh, operate continue to be relevant for us today, whereas the Israelites could see the presence of God in the tabernacle. We experience it in a mere direct way because God's presence, the Holy Spirit, dwells within us. When you repent and you give your heart to God, the Holy Spirit dwells within you. And the key verses in Leviticus is, I am the Lord who brought you up out of Egypt to be your God. Therefore, be holy because I am holy. Keep my decrees and laws for the person who obeys them will live by them. I am the Lord. And uh, Genesis is uh, origins of the world and origins of the nations, origins of God's people. And Exodus focus on God's people and their origin as a nation, uh, focus on organizing the Israelites to become God's people. And Leviticus 
equipping the people to become God's holy nation. Uh, the heart of Torah is holiness. Um, so uh, that's the purpose and uh, everything about Leviticus here. Uh, it says being God's people. See what it says about Jesus in Leviticus. It says God's God instructed his people from the tabernacle. The tabernacle where God's presence dwelt was a place of revelation. In it, God revealed his holy and his will for his people. Christ is God's perfect revelation. That's in Hebrew 1 and 1 and Colossians 1 and 15. Jesus himself came to the world as a human to tabernacle or dwell among us. Um, that's in John 1 and 14. Because he is God, Jesus fulfilled all the requirements of the law. Matthew 5 and 17. And he was the perfect sacrifice that makes all other sacrifices unnecessary. So that's in Hebrews 9, 11 through 28. So, so the, the books, there's God's Bible, it's bylaws. It tells us how to live, how to be holy, and how to worship God. It's about worshiping him and thanking him, you know, for for everything, for waking us up of a morning in our right mind, you know, for just taking care of us through the day, you know. God is a good God, and you give your heart to him and uh, trust him, and he'll take care of you. I love the Lord, and I just pray for y'all that God will take care of you and that you'll feel his presence when you when you pray or when you're talking to him. You know, you can talk to God just like you're talking to anybody. I lay in bed at night, and I talk to him, you know. And I ask him, I say, Lord, what do you want me to do tomorrow? What do you want me to read tomorrow to the people, Lord? Show me what you want me to do, you know. And that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to thank him and praise him for everything that he's done for us down through the years, you know. I love the Lord. I love y'all. And I thank y'all for everything. Y'all so good to us. Amen. Amen. You are good to us. That's all for this one. I hope y'all enjoyed the video. hope y'all enjoyed the cooking and seeing all y'all's cards. But... That's all for this one. We love y'all. Amen. God bless y'all. Make sure yes. to like and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one. Amen.